Welcome in college football fans. It is almost college football season. It's two more weeks away from week zero. But today, listen, man, he's the stat guy. I'm Coach I. We're here to talk North Carolina versus South Carolina in a, the Battle of the Carolinas. Let's get into it. The fanatic. Well, we keep it 100. Keep it real. That's the only way we know how to be. Talking that sports talk. You know what I'm saying? Straight out of South Carolina. Upstate. A six four. Yeah, the F A N A T T I C C, the fanatic where we keep it OG. We talking sports, so I call what All I All right, see. man, we back up in here. How you feeling, stat guy, man? College hey, football man. is nigh. Bro, you I know. We talking about them Carolina Gamecocks, so you know I'm pumped up. Three weeks away from the first night, at least for my boys anyway, man. I'm counting down the days. That's right, man. We got some week zero games, uh, you know, not most notably, I think, Navy versus Notre Dame over in Ireland. Uh, but look, man, we had to talk about the Tar Heels and the Gamecocks, man. Listen, this is this is, uh, uh, you know, border rivalry. Um, both teams, you know, what I'm saying coming in, trying to prove something to, you know, their respective conferences. How you feeling, man, about the Gamecocks just just over in general? Man, I'm I'm excited. I'm just ready for football to be back. I mean, you know, the great part about this year, everybody has expectations. Everybody can claim they can win the national championship. I'm just ready for helmets and pads to start clinging, and let's just get down to some business. That's right, man. So let's just get down to business, man. Jump into the 2022 season recap for both teams, man. Since we don't have any games to go by, because this is the first game, I was like, so North Carolina finished nine and five. You know what I'm saying? They started out red hot. And I think they lost four of the last five games or whatever. Um, they did make it to the ACC championship and, you know, they lost to Clemson and went on to the Holiday Bowl, lost to Oregon. But they played better than we thought they were going to play in that in that Holiday Bowl. You know, after having a disappointing end to the season, I think they regrouped and, and had a good show. And then the Holiday Bowl, man, like, hey, and now it's time to get out here and try to, you know, say Drake, maybe Drake May's last run. It should be Drake May's last run. So, what about the Gamecocks, man, from 2022, man? How you feeling? Yeah, you know, I mean, Gamecocks start off, we, we of course, got folded up by Georgia in week <laughs> three, but who did they not fold up like a long chair? But, man, what everybody's talking about, the Gamecocks, is how they finished down the stretch. The two big wins, the back-to-back -back top ten wins over Tennessee and Clemson to end the year, and then playing um, Notre Dame in the bowl game. You know, we were up in that game, probably should have won that. I mean, we played very well in that game, played good enough to win it, so – Definitely ending the season, I think, on a higher note than North Carolina as far as heading into the 2023 with some momentum. That's right. Definitely momentum. And that's all everybody's talking about, man, is the uh, South Carolina and uh, Tennessee beat down uh, and South Carolina going into Clemson and beat in and there like home win streak. So, I mean, that's just what it is, man. Coming in with a lot of momentum. The, the, the Notre Dame game, you're right. You guys played good, but Notre Dame played better. Uh, it was a close game. I think you guys only lost by seven. Um, so uh, that lends to, like, you know, the offseason and more hype going into offseason, have big recruiting, you know, been been good in recruiting. You know, got Nicholas Harbor coming in. We'll get to see him, sight set on him on uh, September the 2nd. We'll see what he does in the first game, man. So there it is for the 2022 season recap. Another thing I want to note is last time these two faced each other was in 2021 in that Duke's Mayo Bowl. South Carolina did come out with the victory. Shane Beamer got doused with the bucket of mayonnaise. I, mean, I still don't know. Like, I don't know if I can take the bucket of mayonnaise over the face. I, I don't care. Like, but, hey, it's all in good fun. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, I, I I hate mayonnaise, but I mean, I guess in that environment, man, bring bring on the gallons of mayonnaise. I don't know. Bring it on, I guess. I know, right? All right, man, let's jump into the actual preview, man. Let's talk about the South Carolina offense versus North Carolina defense. What are you expecting to see for that, from that South Carolina offense going against and, North Carolina defense? So we, we know North Carolina has their struggles in the secondary. They do get beat up in the passing game a lot. Um they brought in some pieces in the transfer portal to fix that. Um, so they should hopefully have shored that up a little bit, got a little depth. But I'll be honest, I think this is going to come down to us being able to establish the run with Dak Joyner, moving from wide receiver to running back. Um, our running game has really been kind of off the last couple of years. And so we need to be able to establish the run to really free up Spencer to be Spencer and go out there and make plays for us. 
But if we so, can't, go ahead. So, so like on a uh, on, on a scale of one to ten, how you feeling about the South Carolina run game, just in general? Probably like a probably like a six, all because it's yeah. Dak. I trust Dak. Um, I mean, our our offensive line is going to need to prove themselves this year. They're going to have some question mark to them. Um, but because it's Dak, I probably give it a six. I'm I'm comfortable with him getting the ball in his hands and seeing what he can make happen. But I mean, okay. when you haven't haven't been able to run the ball for three years, it's kind of hard to be excited about a running game. Well, North Carolina on the other side was last in the ACC in yards given up and and points allowed. And uh, when you talked about those DBs earlier, six of those DBs transferred out. Now, whether or not you know they're good, we'll we'll see at their new spot. I'm looking at Gene Chizik. Gene Chizik has been there, you know, two years, I think two years now, and he's supposed to be the, the defensive guy, the defensive mind. So he's got to get it together. They had those transfers come in, uh, Armani Chapman from Virginia Tech and Elijah, uh, Elijah Huzzy from East Tennessee State, who was like, you know, on their level, was one of the best defenders in in, in their division. Um, so we're going to see how they add into it. But, the key, like, one of the things is, can they? I know you guys haven't had a good run, but can North Carolina stop the run because they haven't been good at, you know, that front seven hasn't been like a stone wall. You know what I'm saying? Um, right. And the well, the other thing too, I think, is you have to. We have weapons, right? I mean, obviously, Juice. Everybody's going to talk about Juice. At Xavier again, I expect his role to increase a little bit more this year. Um, Nicholas Harbor. We have the transfer Eddie Lewis from Memphis in the slot. So I mean we have we have weapons surrounding Spencer to where hopefully that can take some of the pressure off the run game and allow that to get going. And I'll be honest, man, if North Carolina lets us get the run game going early, it could be a long night with what kind of games we know Spencer's capable of, especially as he proved down the stretch. Yeah, my question for South Carolina is can that offensive line actually block protect, first of all, uh for Spencer Rattler and blocking the run game? You guys did lose like uh, I want to say three of your starting five linemen, or maybe two. I know it's either two or three of your starting offensive linemen. Uh, I, I'm is not as high on Dak being in that backfield, um, just because he's never really done that. I know he's a playmaker in space, but it's different when you try to run between the tackles. Sometimes I think they're probably going to try to move him around, like uh, you know, basically like that. What we used to call back in there a scat back, where you throw it to him out of the backfield, some toss sweeps, things of that nature. And I'm looking for. I know you guys got you know Juice Wells, but a lot of other guys are just okay in my eyes like they can be good but like uh Xavier Leggett he's you know is he gonna be a wide receiver too or is he gonna do what he's been doing you know the rest of the time he's there and kind of disappear in 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 the midst so Nicholas Harbor I've told you you know we have talks if it's me I'm starting out with a lot of jet sweeps and in the rounds trying to use some of that speed trying to work him in slowly because playing a receiver is just not like you can just go out there and uh you know get it from the door but on the other side you know, I'm looking at their defensive front seven. Who knows? Maybe these playmakers get off because their front seven isn't solid. And that secondary, again, with the two transfers, the depth in the secondary, they losing six guys, good or not, if they play, that's that's crucial to depth. You know what well, I'm saying? And one thing to be on the lookout for, the last time these two teams met in the Duke Mayonnaise Bowl, um, we ran a ton of the wild cock offense, and Dak absolutely False. got off playing quarterback. <laughs> Um, I mean, he just he just completely I mean, he showed why we recruited him as a quarterback. Right. And so I'm very interested to see what that looks like with him already lining up in the backfield. Um, I hope we don't get too gimmicky. I know I told you I don't mind a trick play here or there, but I don't want our offense to be a gimmick. I want us to have a true identity on offense this year. Yeah, I, and you know, when we talked about that, I truly think there's going to be at least three to four gimmicky plays this game. Uh, Dak. Play it previously, you know, quarterback experience, wide receiver experience. There could be some double reverse passes, flea flickers, line them up outside. Luke Doty's now at the wide receiver. You know, it could be some double passes. And listen, man, I, listen, special teams king uh, can translate. It can, like, like filter down into the offense. So uh, don't be, listen, Gamecock fans, let us know in the comments how you feel about trick plays and how many you think they should use before becoming some kind of gimmicky offense that, that instead of just lining up trying to beat people. It's that time, man. You know, this season we're starting something new where, you know, partway through the video, we're going to give you the stat guy fact 
of the day. So let's go ahead and give Stat Guy a chance to do that. Go ahead, Stat Guy. Yeah, so you know that we got the Battle of the Carolinas. And the really cool thing with this history is South Carolina and North Carolina started off in the same conference. Um, they were together for 49 years. It started with them being in the Southern Conference and then moving on to the ACC. And up until their departure in 1971, South Carolina, I guess, had just said they had had enough of North Carolina and Tobacco Hill running the ACC and getting calls and being the powers that be. So they said they were taking their balls and going home and went independent. Um, but the cool thing was, while they were joined at the hip in the ACC, South Carolina did win their one and only conference championship. But, hey, man, this is this is a fun rivalry. Look, this is something as we see these conferences expand, I'm really interested to see if this becomes a true rivalry, if they throw a ter- trophy in there and we get the Battle of the Carolinas. Back to you, Coach. This is where it gets tricky again. You know, uh, we know North Carolina can score. You know, with recent news of Taz Walker, the incoming transfer from Kent State, you know, being denied his waiver, they're appealing that right now. I highly doubt I, – I don't think he's going to get the appeal. But if he does, I don't think it's going to be in time for the game. So I don't think he's going to matter in this game one way or another. But they did also get a transfer from Georgia Tech, Nate McCullum. Nate McCullum actually, uh, you know, some would say he was a, he's just going to be just as important, if not more important, than Tess Walker. So uh, one thing, under Mac Brown, I don't think they've had an off- issue on the offense, regardless of who lines up at wide receiver. Then you got Elijah Green in the backfield. What do y'all going – what do you think Beamer and company going to do to try to stop this offense? I mean, the, the key, right? I mean, we – in the – since 2017, we haven't finished higher than 10th in run defense in the SEC, which is brutal. Um, I'm more worried about Elijah Green than I am Drake May. Um, Mm -hmm. I think the key to us winning the game is shutting him down and proving we can stop the run. Um, Drake May is kind of going to get his, right? He's he's just that quarterback. You you try to contain it. You just hope he doesn't get off on you. And so I think the key is going to be stopping Elijah Green and really slowing him down and kind of stifling that run game and then being able to kind of lock in on the receivers and try to get some picks. Yeah, I think you're right. And if, cause if Elijah, you, uh, like you said, it's more like kind of your know, equivalent to basketball. Like, you know, the star player is going to get his 30. What is the role player is going to do? Like if Drake may is going to get his, you definitely can't let Elijah green get his. Cause if the running game is cooking, and the defense is guessing every play. You know what I'm saying? You guys play that four two five. You got uh, you know, you got Debo Williams at linebacker, you got Tonka Hemway up front, and you got those these are my like key players, you know what I'm saying? Nick was it Emin Worry? He's yep. the team team's leading tackler last year. But what about the depth though? Like you lost Jordan Birch. No, he wasn't this, you know, hey, all SEC type dude, but he started and he was a he was a he was a factor and it hurts your depth. So NC, uh, NC could get the going, you know what I'm saying? And, and in the fourth quarter, that's when you're looking for that depth. And that's what I worry about, you know, you guys, you know, not having the depth to keep pace and it turning into a shootout. And I don't think, I know you got Spence Rally, but when we're talking North Carolina beginning of the season where they're always hot, I don't know if you want to shoot out with North Carolina. So. Yeah, no, definitely. So the, the depth that um, defensive tackle is probably going to be our strongest area of depth. Um, on the defensive side, which is nice to be able to kind of rotate those guys in and out and keep them fresh. Um, But, yeah, I mean, we have depth all the way across the defensive line, guys coming back from injury that took an extra year, that kind of thing, Um, recruits coming in, got a couple freshmen we're excited about. Um, I'll be honest, the I can't wait for this game because I want to see what Pup Howard does. Um, okay. He was a big-time recruit out of Florida for us at linebacker, um, and I think he could kind of be that next guy for us at that position that we see really shine. Yeah. Well, like I say, everybody has guys as in numbers, but none of those guys have actually did anything. So that's why I say I'm worried about the depth. Just having numbers doesn't mean you have depth. Like we talking about people with experience, the guys, some one of those guys that's coming back from injury, that's an ACL tear. We don't know what he's going to be like coming off the ACL tear. So, I mean, we'll see what it, it definitely going to have to be. Like you said, that's going to have to be a key that depth in the defensive line. Cause uh, I know you guys, I got Marcellus Dow in the backfield. I mean, like the defensive backfield and, and you guys keep, you know, some, some corners. So um, I don't even know if that's much as a worry as that front seven, you know what I'm saying? So. 
Yeah, no, I mean, like you said, it's gonna be it's gonna be plug and play with some new faces in the defensive backfield this year. But I mean, it's so easy to overlook what South Carolina is able to do with their D backs. It's like, man, you you turn around, it's like we got the next one that just kind of slides in and does his job. Um, and I'm definitely I I'm predicting Marcel Style to have just as good of a year as the guys that before him have had. I mean, the JC Horns and stuff mm-hmm. to where it's like He's just the next one up as far as being a lockdown corner for us on his way to the league. All right, man. That's right. It is, man. And y'all know what time it is now, man. It's the fourth quarter, man. Fourth quarter is time for those predictions and keys to the game, man. So, all right, I'm going to go ahead and jump in here and I'm going to give my keys to the game and the predictions. So my keys to the game, you mentioned it earlier. Can South Carolina stop the run? I think that's the key to the game. I think South Carolina, if you go back and watch our preview video, I think I said the floor was six and six. And if you want to stay away from the floor, you got to win this game. And to win this game, I think you're going to have to stop the run. I mean, like, again, I think North Carolina is definitely going to be able to pass the ball here and there, but you got to be able to stop the run. And my prediction for the game, UNC is two and a half point favorites. I'm going with UNC 35-31. Mm. Uh, you just hurt my feelings hurt my feelings look man the real key to the game you were right about the running game but the real key to the game is can usc establish the run um look i don't i'm not out here parlaying anything but i'm i'm taking Dak over 75 yards i think we get the ground game going um and it opens up the fun that is spencer rattler feeling himself um this game is going to be this game is going to be wild it's going to be absolutely fun. I, I want to be like, man, this could be a true shootout, and we could see maybe App State, North Carolina from last year, mm-hmm. just something absolutely nuts. But then part of me believes that this is just going to turn into a nasty fist fight of a brawl, and we're going to see an amazing week one game. You already know I'm riding with my Gamecocks. Give me South Carolina 38, North Carolina 35. Oh, okay, a three-point win for the Gamecocks. Both of us in the 30s. You just got the Gamecocks coming out on top. All right, Gamecock fans, North Carolina fans, get in the comments. Let us know what you think the score prediction is going to be and what the key to the game. What If you're picking your team to win or lose, tell us what the key to that prediction is going to be, man. So, hey, stick with us. We're going to be previewing the South Carolina Gamecocks all year and a couple of North Carolina games. So don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, man. Hit the notification bell. And listen, share the video with some friends. Whether you agree with us or not, we like to go back and forth in the comments. If you don't believe us, check out some of the recent videos. It's getting crazy out there. Also, don't forget to check us out on Saturday nights this season, live at 10 o'clock. It's our second season where we do college football recap. Hey, voice your opinion. Let us know what you're feeling. For the stat guy, this is Coach I. Fan out. We out. We got it jumping like it's that valley. I call my dogs out the pound. Let's go eat. Turn on the fan at Let's have a debate. Who really hold down the southeast from state to state? What team hungry gonna eat everything up off they plate?